Thanks, Robert. Well, good morning, uh, everyone, and, uh, and welcome. So Brixton Metals, if you're not uh, familiar with the company, we've been around since about uh, 2010, and uh, we trade on the uh, Venture uh, Triple B is our ticker. Um, like I say, buy Brixton Bake, that's our, that's our motto. Uh, or you can, uh, you can pick it up in the U.S. Under, uh, on the OTCQB under Triple uh, B XF. So we'll start with our, our team. Um, we believe it all starts with the team. Uh, we put together uh, a good group of, uh, of people. Uh, I've worked with uh, a number of these people back in uh, my Nova Gold days, back in uh, 2004, 2005. Uh, really, we're discovery uh, focus. We're we're you know small team. I think we're about ten or twelve uh, people on an annual basis. But we've all got experience in building companies and um, and, and, and resources, and that's ex effectively what we're trying to do here with Brixton is uh, build up a uh, a meaningful uh, resource. I'm mainly focused on uh, on gold and, and copper and silver, and uh, whether we get to production uh, remains to be seen. Um, you know, originally we set out to this thing, make a big discovery and, and sell it and make shareholders a bunch of money. But because the markets have been so challenging over the last few years, um, we've kind of opened our uh, view of uh, possibly, uh, you know, getting one of these things in, into production. But uh, we're, you know, we're certainly year, years away from that. But uh, no, nonetheless, uh, the goal is to build, build, build shareholder value. Uh, here's our, our snapshot of the company. Uh, we're trading, I think, around 27 cents last time I looked. Um, raised a, a pretty significant amount of uh, money this year, $7.8 million. Uh, the company has actually traded since we put out our, uh, our results from our uh, drill hole in, in the summer, which, is a, which we'll get into. It's a pretty remarkable drill hole. The company's traded over 60 million shares in the last two months. So pretty meaningful uh, volume and, and appreciation in the stock, as you can see by the chart. Um, so we're pretty happy about that and, and actively drilling. And um, with the investment from uh, Mr. Eric Sprott, uh, he put in $4 million to get uh, just under 20% of the company. And you can see the other shareholders, management. Uh, I'm about a 5% shareholder personally. And we've got Rob McEwen, US Global, Gold 2000, Pan American Silver, and, and, and Heck Club. So really the, the focus for Brixton is really a focus. This year has been all about the gold for us and, and the copper gold. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our, our other silver-weighted assets, but this year we, you know, we did start to see the gold uh, market moving, so we decided to uh, to focus more on our, our gold plays, and uh, and obviously wanted to get back to Thorn and, and, and drill this uh, copper gold target. So, so you think of uh, think of Brixton. We've got two large-scale projects in BC, uh, gold-weighted copper gold for free targets, and then we have two uh, two fairly significant uh, uh, silver-weighted assets as well. And for, for the project like Thorn, um, because it is a large-scale porphyry target, uh, we are looking for potential partners on, on that to help, uh, help move that project forward, just, just given the uh, capex required to, uh, to get there. So here's the location uh, of the assets, uh, northern BC. I would say the Thorn project is on the northern uh, tip of the Golden Triangle. It is really a copper-gold uh, porphyry district. And then the Atlan uh, area, is uh, is outside of the Golden Triangle, but it's just south of the Yukon border, in the uh, really the famous uh, gold fields, uh, Atlan gold fields. Uh, they've been producing gold out of there uh, for 120 years. Um, really started in the Yukon gold rush, and of course the prospectors do uh, uh, get off the beaten trail. Um, they they found gold in Atlan and have been placer mining there for 120 years. But not a lot of work for um, uh, for the hard rock source of all that nugget gold. So Brixton took a position there in the last couple of years uh, and have been, uh, been, been working to try to find the source of that gold. Uh, so we did a little bit of work. We'll talk a bit more about that. Um, and then you've got our uh, Langus, uh, there's actually two mines here, Langus and, uh, and Hudson Bay uh, mines. These are part of the cobalt camp, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. Uh, half a billion ounces of silver came out of here. Uh, we have two past producing mines and generated some very good silver results here. In, in, in the multi-kilo uh, over several meters. Um, and then our Hog Heaven asset in uh, Montana. Um, this is actually quite an interesting asset. We haven't drilled here yet. Um, when we acquired it, it came with a bunch of uh, paper data. So it took us about 18 months to digitize all that data and get it into a resource, uh, no, sorry, into a, a block model or, or 
It doesn't have, it has a resource, but it's a um, non-compliant historical resource of about 60 million silver equivalent ounces. So meaningful, uh, it's had a lot of work on it, 722 holes, 60,000 meters of drilling. So it's not an early stage project, um, but it hasn't seen any recent uh, uh, drilling. So as the silver market moves, you might see Brixton uh, shift focus uh, a little bit in, into some of our silver weighted assets, um, you know, just to, uh, you know, obviously just to monetize that, um, that, that aspect. We do have a number of uh, groups interested in the hog heaven, so there's a, you know, potential sale opportunity for, for the company. You know, we're, we're a couple million dollars into the project, so, you know, if we could sell it for eight million, ten million bucks, that'd be a, that'd be a hell of a win, I think, for, for shareholders. So, you know, we're looking to monetize these assets one way or another, um, however we can uh, crystallize value for shareholders. One thing we like about the Langus is that we could drill, you know, given Northwest BC, uh, you're pretty much shut down here once the winter starts uh, setting in, where we could shift gears and, and drill in Ontario here all, all year round, you know, relatively low cost drilling. I think our all in costs were something like $120 a meter. Um, so we can do a lot of drilling for not a lot of dollars and we drilled some very high grade silver on near surface there already. So that's an idea we have uh, uh, planted already to uh, perhaps you know, keep, keep generating news flow over the winter months. Uh, just a little snapshot of Thorn, kind of where it is. You guys are probably familiar with a lot of these uh, mine development stories and uh, there's GT Gold's uh, uh, discovery here. We got Red Chris mine here. Um, so we're in this trend here uh, up in the, uh, the, the tip. And uh, it's you know it's been underexplored, but it's not a new uh, it's not a new uh, area in a sense of, of uh, exploration. It was originally a 1959 uh, Kenco discovery, and there's been probably a dozen different operators over the years. And we got involved in, in 2010 here, and have been uh, basically been chipping away at it. So there's no roads in here. It's uh, it's air access from uh, we we fly in mainly from uh, Atlin up here or Whitehorse. It's about a you know, it's a two hour flight to Whitehorse and it's about a 45 minute flight down to the project. Uh, we have an airstrip established at the camp. And interestingly, we've, uh, we've, got a, we've got an interesting route here to Tidewater. If you look at what everybody does up in this part of the world, they all get down to the Highway 37 and they get their ore out, in, in, uh, out of, uh, out of uh, Stewart, which is deep water port. Well, we have an opportunity uh, to short circuit that and get into Tidewater right over here. So it's about a 60 kilometer um, to tide water here, um, and that's something that we're working on. So when we started, uh, I guess I think I have another slide here. Here's a, a a snapshot of when we started in 2010, 2011. My uh, Brixton's in green here, and uh, you can see how the uh, the land position has grown uh, pretty aggressively over over the years. There's that route to, to Tidewater, you can see that little leg there on the left. And part of the rationale for, um, for staking uh, all this land is the BC government came out uh, with a reanalysis of all their uh, regional geochemical data. So we've got uh, very high probability uh, porphyry geochemistry signature and all this stuff down here is these are all effectively porphyry uh, signature uh, geochemistry uh, coming out of these drainages and um, it was wide open ground. So we just thought, well, let's just go jump on it uh, before somebody else does. Uh, it hasn't really been explored. So this is you know, virgin territory from an exploration perspective. And keep in mind that a lot of ice has peeled off here over the last 20 years. So uh, this is sort of next phase uh, opportunity for us to, um, you know, to explore. Where we've been focused, if you look at the land package, most of the activity has really been set up, up in this part of the property. And then it's kind of focusing in. Um, if you look at that big claim block, um, in fact, this is an older shot, so we've got more land than that, but just kind of give you a sense of where we are here, where this block is, which is about a 10 square kilometer uh, area. So where we're focused on um, this year is really these three targets. Uh, this is the Camp Creek target. This, this is where we drilled that, that big hole. Uh, hole 150 was drilled on this uh, diatreme breccia zone here. You know, this is about a kilometer and a half uh, by about a kilometer uh, zone uh, that we see that this is a high sulfidation mineralized system and we believe that there's an underlying porphyry at depth here 
and, and the model that we're using for this system, which seems to hold been holding uh, fairly holding together fairly well, is a deposit in the Philippines owned by Goldfields, which is called uh, Far Southeast, and it's 43 million ounces of gold equivalent, and the ore body starts at about 800 meters depth. So we know it's not sitting at surface, um, otherwise it'd be a hole in the ground, um, but these all these uh, diatremes, these high-grade um, copper, gold, silver veins that we see, there's a whole series of uh, high solvidation veins that trend northeast along this Camp Creek trend, and we believe those are all in indicative of a porphyry at depth here. So we're running geophysics on this now as we speak. We actually have two drills turning on the site. Uh, camp is off the screen up to the northwest. And uh, we drilled about a half a dozen holes on this target. And if you look at the scale here, so this uh, Camp Creek porphyry, this is one target, and about four kilometers to the south is the Chivas uh, porphyry target, which is a separate system uh, altogether, but quite a large. Uh, we've mapped this for about three and a half kilometers in length itself. And then uniquely, we have this uh, zone in blue here, which is called the outlaw zone, which is, is, is not a porphyry. It's a sediment-hosted gold zone that we drilled um, a few holes on previously. And this was originally a Chevron discovery back in the 80s. Uh, they did a bunch of geochem, and we've, we've added to that. So our goal this year was to drill about 7,000 meters, between, uh, mainly between this target, the Chivas target, and, and, and the outlaw zone. Probably just to get a couple holes into this. The main focus is really to test these porphyries. So it's a big scale system. I think the upshot is that we have, well, we haven't really tested the porphyry previously. Most of the work was focused on the veins and, and the diatreme. And really this is a shot at, at, at attempting to test the actual porphyry system. Uh, we know we have the right chemistry, we have the right rocks, and uh, we have the right alteration. So we'll see if we can get the grade. Uh, so this is the hole we drilled uh, this year, um, uh, hole 150, we basically drilled uh, down this pipe and the rationale again was to see if we could drill through uh, out of the pipe into the porphyry, again using that uh, far southeast model um, which holds, for, holds, well, holds true fairly well. But you can see uh, this hole, you know, 150, uh, basically drilled six, uh, was six, 550 meter of about two grams uh, gold equivalent, and within that was about 136 meters of five grams gold equivalent. Um, there was a dry section in here, but right at the bottom it did start to pick up, um, but we felt that uh, it was, we had enough information to, to, um, to stop the hole. Uh, some very rich uh, copper in this hole. This is, from, this is the same hole here from about 421 meters. You can see all this copper. This, is, this ran about 4% 4, 4 copper. Um, but one of the things that really intrigued us and got us a little excited about this, our model, we're proving our thesis correct, is we started to see these uh, porphyry clasts um, in mineralized porphyry clasts in the diatreme, which we hadn't seen previously because we hadn't drilled uh, to this depth. They didn't start till about 429 meters. So this is encouraging for us uh, to keep going on, on this. And, and you can see all these little red lines here. These represent those high sulfidation veins that I'm talking about. These are very rich in copper. I think we're getting up to like 20 or 30% copper in some of these veins. Um, one of the things we did is went back and re-logged this hole 121, and we hadn't recognized it previously when we drilled it. There's a series of high sulfidation veins in, in, in the hole, but right at the bottom eight meters of this 108 meter hole, uh, there's eight type porphyry veins there. So it's again, supporting our, our thesis that somewhere down here, what the shape of this thing is, we don't know until we, until we actually drill it out, but um, somewhere down here, there, there's a porphyry lurking. And we know there's another diatreme. Uh, we went back and actually did some relogging. Uh, there's another diatreme about a kilometer to the north of this main uh, Oban one. Um, so this also uh, is, is supporting our thesis as well. Uh, that's just a snapshot of the hole. This is just really one hole. Uh, you can chop and change it how, how you want. There's a lot of metal in this hole. Uh, so pretty impressive uh, numbers and pretty consistent, uh, actually gold and silver in, in the hole, and surprisingly uh, high in high in lead and zinc as well. And we have some pretty uh, pretty strong copper numbers. Uh, there's some nice hits here, uh, six meters of five, uh, three and a half percent copper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is just a cross section of the of the Chivas target. We actually attempted to drill this uh, this zone back in uh, 2017. Really focused on the gold more more than the copper, but we just clipped the um, 
We just clipped the uh, the edge, we think, of the of the porphyry, and so now we're actually drilling into the in, into the guts of this thing uh, as we speak. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about now about the Atlan project because when we started the year, uh, it was really uh, was was all about this Atlan uh, gold fields because we hadn't really done much work. It took us two years to assemble the land position, and we decided to get get up here and get some work done. Um, there's some pretty impressive uh, drill results historically. Uh, you can see some of these numbers, five and a half meters of 500 gram uh, gold. Uh, the largest nugget in Canada actually was found in, in Atlan, 85 ounce nugget. And there's lots of 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, big nuggets come out of here. Um, but there's also some very fine grain uh, gold as well, which, which kind of leads us to believe there, there's multiple models here. Um, Homestake did good work here back in the 80s. Um, they put together this 450,000 ton, 10 gram, non-compliant resource um, on it. Um, but good infrastructure, got road access in here, and uh, we've got a number of targets that we're working on, and we're going to be uh, continuing to work on this project. So the, ro the, the roads are in red here, and the yellow are the uh, historical and or current uh, placer mining operations. So what impressed uh, me when I got into here originally was just the sheer scale of this thing. You're talking about a 40 kilometer by 40 kilometer area and gold's coming out of all the drainages. Um, the gold is either coarse, um, nuggety, you still got host rocks attached, you've got hackley gold. And um, so that, what's the evidence is that the gold hasn't transported very far. It's coming from the system here somewhere. And it's a bit of a needle in the haystack. But part of the challenge here is these low lying valleys um, have pretty thick gravel cover. So, um, you know, good luck trying to find a vein under 100 meters of gravel. So what we decided to do was focus on the high elevation targets like the LD target and some areas out here where we're above the gravel cover. And it's been successful. Uh, we've got some, some uh, dr drilling done this year. Uh, we drilled, I think our best intercept was this one here, eight and a half grams over two meters along, along this, uh, this corridor here. Very strong uh, gold geochem in, in this area. So it's really our first uh, first kick of the can of drilling on, on the LD zone. So we did about, I don't know, 1,200 soils uh, this year. You can see in, in red and, and bright colors, uh, the LD lights up quite well because again, it's higher, higher elevation. You get red in the yellow jacket where a lot of that historical drilling was. Um, there's pretty th still thick gravel cover in here, so it's a bit of a challenge. So we've got identified a couple of trends. We've got a large gold anomaly out here that I think work is worth some more, some more work. So I guess that's pretty much it. In summary, we believe we have a great portfolio. We've got a strong technical team uh, with skin in the game, and uh, we're hungry for discoveries, and uh, we're actively drilling, so I'd keep an eye on, on Brixton. We should have some results uh, coming out uh, shortly. So thank you very much. Thank you.